rest of my life. Wale, bright in the your sight, in the jaw sight, in the God's eye, me wale, bright in Walk where you want me to walk. Talk where you want me to talk. Good afternoon, guys. <laughs> um, hope you all are doing well on this beautiful Sunday evening. Nasila, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm <laughs> yeah. How are you? I good enough. I good. I good. I good. No complaints. All right. All right. All right. Well. Um, as promised, the last time we're back on today, we're still doing the WTT Let's Talk series. And uh, today we have our same guest from last week, Dr. Mark Scott, who is also my brother, as we established last week. Um, and, uh, you know, we discussed whether we should have stuck to schedule or bring him up for this episode. And we decided that after... The way things went at the last um, the last episode that we we'll get into it now. So today's episode, as you would have seen, is curved or be curved. And yeah. I know probably some of us were wondering, like, what what they even mean <laughs> by curve or be curved? Candace, you want to you want to no. let the people know? <laughs> people know? Um, basically, what curve or be curved means is that sometimes life true, not sometimes, all the time. Life shows different scenarios, different episodes that we didn't cater for. And curve or be curved is basically how you handle it. Did it wreck you, mash you up, or did you take it and let it know who's boss? So that's basically it. Discussing different experiences. I believe every one of us would have been curved at some point in time. And every single one of us would have not been cool but I've had that situation and be like yes I came out triumphant in this one so that's basically what curve or be curved is about so Mark is going to give us his curve or be curved testimony stories advice etc I think as well I just want to add though like for further context in addition to what Candice said you know we are accustomed to or is is we hear more about those situations when um, life happens and you have to react or life happens and you have to respond. But I have realized um, in most recently, um, there are a lot of times when life is continuing as you know it, but you find yourself um, in a particular dilemma um, one way or the other where you want to, or you're wondering, or you're calculating whether you need to go against the green. You know, you have this status quo of life where, you know, things are going well, you might have a good job, everything might be working out for you as people would um, expect, or as people, people looking into your life would be like, yeah, things working for Candace, or things working for Matilda, and then you over there, and you check in, like, no, this, this, this is just not it and something needs to be done so that's the other side of curve so sometimes life throws you a curveball and then sometimes you have to throw life a curve and um my brother as we were discussing before we came on um i know him to be a curver in my opinion he he is a curver um and you know it's very inspiring to me i'm not trying to be sappy but it's very inspiring to me to be that close to somebody who um, will determine somehow, and he will tell us how he determines, will determine somehow that, you know, despite how this thing is going, I need to do something else. And the something else I need to do is against what anybody else would imagine I need to do. So we'll just have him jump on and jump straight into the fray. Hello. Catch your mid tea, yeah. <laughs> <I was drinking. laughs> 
So, well, we, we just um, kind of like you discussed what today's topic is on curve or being curved. But um, I don't know if you remember or you will remember that last time when you were talking, um, we kind of ended off where you were giving some advice to people who are in the waiting um, space, where they're waiting for something to happen, waiting to do something to happen. And you started to drop some bombs of gems. Um, with respect to the waiting period. I don't know, Candice is very excited waiting for you to expound on those. Um, so I'm sure you probably remember, I don't know if Candice wants to do her little... I remember, I remember, you said, I remember it was, the one that stood out to me is, is he said that um, for some persons, well, he was giving an analogy to some to a tree and he was saying, you know, some trees, when they bear fruit, you know, they don't pick the fruit the first time, neither the second time. When they pick the fruit it, the third time, and he was just saying, sometimes how long you have to wait, you know, sometimes it's first time going around, second time going around, and the third time, then that will be your season. I think he also was saying that sometimes we are not in the correct position that God wants us to be. I could be wrong, but... I think those were the two, and I can't remember the third one too clearly. I don't know if Mark remembers the three that he would have said to us. Well, I think I'll be able to, to, to recap the three. But I think the first was um, that sometimes when we're waiting, the first thing is finding out whether or not, or trying to determine whether in waiting... Right, that we are actually waiting on the right thing. Because if we if we not if we're not waiting on the right thing, we may wait a very long time. Um, there is also the other avenue which we didn't talk about of going going to try to do things on yourself against what you know is and that situation happens quite a bit as well. So sometimes people in their waiting uh sort of tempted to make it happen for themselves. And uh, I think that's a byproduct of the first one. I think the second one was you, you're doing the right thing. You're in the right uh, thing, but you just have to wait a bit, you know. And um, they, I think there is something interesting about waiting that, um, you know, it is. It, I, I think in life, a, a real big thing about waiting is not necessarily the fact that we wait. It is how we wait. You know, how we wait is actually the real important thing. I was evaluating myself recently concerning a particular situation. And it's a situation in which, you know, requires some waiting. And one of the things I realized is, you know, I was waiting anxiously. And um, there's a difference between waiting anxiously and waiting in peace. Right. And I think I think the 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 when when I'm waiting anxiously, I'm wasting time because a lot of the times there's something that needs to be done while you're waiting, right? So um, that was the second one, and I think the third one. I think you were talking about it, can the first part, right? Which is that sometimes one of the the reasons for waiting is that um, what you have to do or what is prepared for you or your blessing or what, what is coming to you is as such that it maybe sometimes takes you a couple iterations well before you get into that thing for you. Right? And I think I had, I think I had, I'm not too sure I had shared, am I answering too long for this first part here? Okay, okay, just you all have to kind of like green me, eh? Um, um. I think one of the things that I think was, I, I'm not too sure I had shared it, but it was something that, you know, you know, I heard recently and it really helped me. And it was the, it was the story of the uh, two gentlemen that built, um, one built their ho home on a sand, it's story in the Bible, right? One built their house on sand and the other built their house on rock, right? But when, yeah, you look deeper at that particular passage. At at one point in time, those two people stand started off the same point, right? And what happens is the rock to get to that rock takes some digging, right? So 
what happened is, is that digging is while you're waiting, right? So both people want a building, so they're waiting for this building to go up, right? Um, the one that built the house on the sand started to build above ground really quickly, right? Because they, they didn't really bother to dig deep enough to hit rock, to hit a foundation, right? So they just started to build, 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 build. So the thing is, which I think was the, the reason it resonated with me, was that a lot of times in life, I, I believe, it is my belief that when God is preparing you for things and preparing you for some things, you have to be willing sometimes, and often you may see those around you, it seems like they're moving more quickly than you. It seems like, you know, people are getting to where they need to go to more quickly than you. And you can wonder, like, what's going on with me? So think about that particular parable. That person that was digging towards the rock was still digging down while they seen the person across the street building up already, right? But the type of building, how long that building will last, the legacy that building will, ha will have, how high that building could go, was determined by the fact that that person decided to dig rock. So what it tells me, long story short, is in waiting, there's work to do, right? So sometimes, sometimes... um. We just have to be cognizant and hang in there. And, and I feel like I'm stretching out things a little too long here. Matila, I think you're muted. You're muted, Tila. My bad. No, no, um, I was like, no, nah, you're not stretching at all. Um, I think, not I think, you know, for me, my experience has been, um, the waiting is never, has never been for me you know, this last situation you described, I feel it's yeah. more like the, the, the crop you're talking about yeah. when, you know, I think you were saying there are some, there are some crops um, at first harvest, you throw away everything. Mm -hmm. Second harvest, you throw away everything. And it's not until third harvest or some subsequent harvest that you're actually able to utilize the fruit um, mm -hmm. for yourself. And, I mean, for a lot of people, in a waiting situation could be really hard because sometimes you tell yourself, you know, you're saying, you know, in a wait is when you have to put in your work. Sometimes yeah. you put in your work in the first harvest, you wait, <laughs> work again, second harvest, you wait again, and you're just working and waiting until you ask yourself, but like, what again I have to, what else do I have to do? Right or what other preparation do I have to make? And I think a lot of times people come to a point where they're just like, maybe it, it shouldn't be, or maybe it's not for me. Or maybe as you were saying on the flip side, it could be that that what you're waiting on, on your first point is not actually what you're supposed to be waiting on. So your effort, your time, your energy, is misdirected into something that's not waiting. But if you have to advise somebody into figuring out whether they're waiting is waiting in vain on your own thing or whether you just have to hold on for two, three seasons again, what is the, what's the inflator? Or how do you, you know, pick yourself up and give yourself that? Before Mark answers, answers that question, I remember has to do with the whole waiting outside in the gallery, yeah, guys. If you're hearing noises, it's because I'm in the gallery, right? So I apologize in advance. I remember a time, Sister Scott, your, both of your mother was talking to me, and she said to me, Candice, sometimes what is in us is so significant that the pruning process takes longer. And somehow in hearing, and both of your children that came back to mind, and that, that's also a reason why some persons waiting period, you know, seems to be drawn out. And it's because what needs to be developed will take some time. What needs to be activated, stood up, cut off, I don't know, that whole season. It, it's time consuming for some of us. So I actually remember that, and that stuck with me, and it just came back to my memory, and I thought I'll share it. Yeah. That's a that's a powerful thing. I think I think you know, you know there are a couple of things that I think Matila. But I think to answer your question directly first as to how, you know, to determine that I, I wish I had a um, what, what you call a you know a, a 
panacea for that or uh, all encompassing answer or something. But I think that, you know, really and truly, if someone genuinely serves God and you genuinely ask God what you should be doing, I believe that God is faithful to let you know what you should be doing. That's my belief. It has been my experience, right? No, I think that it is a natural core. It is a natural thing. When you, when you look at the Bible, so the first thing we spoke about where we said there are instances where somebody may be asking, but it is not necessarily what you're asking for could be wrong, right? The thing is this, and it, there's a perfect passage in John 15 that deals with almost everything we're speaking about. So we could take it from a particular angle with that at first, right? Which says that in John 15, it says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you ask whatever you want and it will be given. So there, there is a point where if you're truly abiding in God, you would not ask a mist. You wouldn't ask or pursue the wrong things, if that makes sense, right? So, 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 so there is a, so there is that. But the same passage starts off by saying, you know, that you know, you know, you know, uh, Jesus is, you know, the, the 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 we have to bear fruit, and you know, Jesus is divine, and we need to bear fruit, right? Because we're branches that bear fruit, right? But it says. Any branch or any person, as I'm talking too much height, any person that is in God, that is productive, and God sees that you are productive, God says, hold on. Any branch like that, I need to sometimes take a time out, prune them so that they could produce and bear more and higher quality fruit. So it's, it's an expansion thing, right? So once you are productive, the natural processes that you would have weight in processes, because when you when you when you when you have to be pruned, right? It that is a process of getting rid of certain things or things. Which brings me to the to the point here. I think is something I am learning. And I think it's in, it's important to know, right? And that is that, or important to be cognizant of. It is my belief, I am coming to believe now, that God knows every single point in your life you're going to be blessed. As a matter of fact, I believe that, that I believe is the truth, that you, from the, there are desires of yours. Once that desire, once you're in Christ and you have a particular type of desire, an innate desire for certain types of things, to do certain types of things. It is my belief God put that there. God put that there for a reason, right? Now, there's another reality, which is there are blessings that God has for us. Part of the reason of waiting a lot of times is so that we could stand to get that blessing, right? There's one thing for God to hand you a blessing, there's another thing to walk in that blessing, right? So with, with blessings come certain levels of responsibility, right? And sometimes to, 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 to be responsible, God has to work on you or prune you. So when he give you that blessing, you can wear or walk with that blessing with success. You can be victorious walking in that blessing. I have a son, right? My son is five years old. My son wants a German shepherd, right? Now I could go and get that, and I intend to, God spares my life, get it for him. But I had to explain for, to him that, hey, at five years old, you can't as yet have the responsibility for a German shepherd. Very soon we could go and get you like a French bulldog or something, and you you, you can operate at that level. But I know that I will get it for him, God spares life. But there are times when, as a father, a God as our father, can't give you something you want. He knows you are going to get in the future, but he can't give it to you because that thing in the future will be a perfect match for you. That thing too early could serve to your demise. 
Not because God doesn't want to give it to you, but you have to be prepared to walk in that blessing. I think yeah. that's the part of waiting. Blessings to the limb equals us messing it up if you're not really. You could you could mess up blessings if you get it too early. Yeah. You mess up blessings if you get it too early. And the, and the Bible shows us that consistently. Yeah. But God is so good. Sometimes the feeling you get is is is, 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 is so I really believe this. When you want something, want something, that is heaven sending you know, a note that it is yours. That is yours. That's why right there. <laughs> But there is a process. The Bible says, let patience have its perfect work. So when it is finished, you will be complete, lacking nothing. Right? Lacking, lacking nothing. Right? So, yeah, I think I think that, that's what I'll say with that one. I hope I'm not talking to my oh, tongue too official. No, that was according to me today, preaching to the choir, yes? That okay. was, that was nah, nah. what would you say? I'm not sure if you're drifting from the curve of the curve topic. Like this I, is yeah, I think we should just, just go ahead and go. As well, that's sure going to make us digress a little bit. But it's fine. We'll get to the curve. That is fine. That is fine. Okay. okay, so Mark, what would you say about things that we want that but we do not need? Do you think that sometimes we God allows us to get something that we want for us to know our wants and not our needs, if that makes sense. So I, I explain it for me a little more. So sometimes we want certain things. Okay, so like like you like you you want uh what you want? You want to be the manager of a particular job, right? And doors open that you do become the manager of a particular job. Or you want to get a particular vehicle, or you want to get a particular um, spouse. Mm -hmm. And God allow it that, okay, that person or that kind walk into your life, that vehicle come your way. And I realize, no, this is not what I want. I do not want this. This is not working out for me. And I realize that clearly this is, this is, this is wrong. This is not for me. Do you think that sometimes we have to get what we think we want to realize what we want is not what we need, is not God's ideal plan for us. I, I understand. It's funny because I just dropped my question because I, I essentially had like the same kind of question but from a different slant. And it's really to get your opinion because, um, and it, it actually is linked to the curve or B curve because that's my own example of the little curve, right? Um, very small in comparison to yours, but. Um, I, my life experience has me wondering whether, you know, you spoke about the branch, right? And you spoke about the principles of being productive, whatever that the branch must have. And once you adhere to those principles or you exhibit those qualities, um, your desires will be yours and that kind of thing. I am wondering whether by virtue of somebody being righteous, living as righteously as they can, obeying the word, doing what they need to do, um, all the things that we as good Christian people are supposed to, you're doing that and you have a particular desire, right? As can they say, it could be anything. You have a particular desire and that desire you have is probably not um, what God intends for you, meaning it might be along the spectrum, but it's not that thing that God has you. But because... <laughs> He loves us so much. And because you're so diligent, you're so productive, you're so committed, you're so um, passionate, right? That God was like, you know, child, I really, really have this fear, but take it anyway. Yeah, so that that's the same. It's very, very similar questions. I let me let me see how I, how I will respond to that uh, from my perspective. I think um First, I believe the the I believe that there is a whole and we don't need to we don't need to probably dig too deeply into this part of it, but there, there is a whole school of thought out there on the perfect will of God for somebody as opposed to the permissible will of God for somebody. And that is that God can have this particular path for you, 
Remember, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you genuinely saved, and you live a life where you believe that, you confess that. Remember, we all fall short of the glory of God. We all fall short, right? So everybody uh, 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 <laughs> make mistakes, right? Now, what I think happens is some people probably work to minimize those mistakes more than others, conscientiously, right? So because of that, what you have is some people may walk more aligned to the perfect will of God for their lives. And some people may be in, because of God's grace, what you call the permissible will of God, right? But I don't want to take things down too much. Um, what, 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 I, what I would say with that is I believe, right, that this is my belief, that even that desire, God uses it to do something in you while you find out that's not what you really even wanted, right? So I can tell you personally for me, there are things I thought I wanted and God allow me to do it or get it or experience it. And it is while doing it or getting it or using it or something, God used that to mature me spiritually. To the point where I say, hey, this is probably not what I wanted, right? But when you look back, there was something about that experience or something about wanting that thing or waiting for that thing that God used to develop you. So you see, what I think we always need to remember, God not interested in things. God does give things. Things are a byproduct of just serving God, right? So, you know, so... um. What God interested in is using you to impact others while he impacts you. So impacting your life so that you can impact others. So all our experiences, everything we go through is literally just a massive, long life worth of gym, different equipment, different machines. You go on this one for this particular period because you need to work out this part. You go on this one for this, you need to work out in this part. And all the time you're getting fit. But while you're getting fit, you're not fe you, you feeling pain, right? Or you, you're feeling some level of discomfort. Sometimes you feel amazing. You feel energy, right? So I just think that is so. Candice, in terms of um, the part, this is my belief, in terms of if you could, I think I interpreted your question wrong. I understood what you said, so I'll just talk about it. But there was something else that came to mind when you were talking about it where sometimes, because I, I have, Friends, and again, this is a rabbit hole. I don't want to seem like a sentence on a rabbit hole, but I have, I know people, and your question reminded me of it, where you ask, you know, sometimes what we want versus what we need, right? And I think it's always important to know with 100% surety that God wants us to have stuff we want. I think it's something we always need to remember. Right, God actually wants us to have stuff we want once it aligns to His will for us. Right, uh, there, there is nothing gained by adopting a mindset I want this, but this good let's do, or I want this, but good with this. I want that. God don't think like that. God, look at how God said He would do things. He said. He will give you exceedingly and abundantly above all you could imagine or think. So how I just think about this, try to think about the highest thing possible. Because when you think of God, say, he will beat what you think. So if you think here, he'll beat it. If you think here, he'll beat it. If you think here, he'll beat it. So as far as I can say, if I could think here and God beat that, then there's no reason I should think here for God to beat it here. Right? So I digest... Um, it's not directly related, but I, feel it, I think it was yeah. important to say that because I know yeah. some people, even friends of mine, I listen to them talk. Sometimes I was like, man, I don't think you should have that approach in life. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really king, right? But yeah. I don't know. Did that even answer the question? Yeah. Actually, Mama Tila said the same, the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's well. Yeah. And the love explanation they gave. I mean, I never... Put a limit on God. I know God will grant no. the desires of my heart once it's according mm -hmm. to His will. But as short as said, some of us we do limit God. So I like that little point. It's not in. It's not in at the end. But I just, I just thinking, you know, sometimes he, hearing you speak the opening statement, sometimes you really question whether I should have allowed this or I should have I 
could I have not been curved <laughs> if I was a little more careful, if I took a little more time, if I prayed a little more, you know, there's always that doubt in your mind. But hearing you speak, just when you said it's like exercising. Candice Joy today, Matila today, would not be who we are if we if it were not for those situations we went through. Being mm -hmm. exercised, being on that treadmill, falling down, you bust your mouth, you bust your elbow, but you give up, up and they go a different route and it will not bust your mouth your elbow again. So thank you for what you just said then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think it is I think it is important to note that I, I think that's important, right? I think if I could say one thing quickly on that point that I think it is important to separate two particular dynamics, right? And if we use the gym example, right? So in the Bible, Paul says, do we continue in certain things that are wrong just because we increase, right? So one of the things I was saying is to make sure is that there are experiences you have that could be unpleasant, but those are God-ordained unpleasant experiences. So no matter how you live, how right you live in, how much you obey, that is something that needs to happen to develop and mature you, right? Like, you know, look at how Jesus lived and look at what happened all the way. There are other experiences that could be negative or have adverse effects that are self-inflicted due to disobedience or not using wisdom or not listening to advice, right? So if you use the gym example, you could go on a particular machine on the gym and in that gym, using that machine cause a certain amount of soreness. But that's what you're supposed to do. Somebody can tell you, you see them machines across there, do not go and use them. They're going through maintenance right now. Something can happen. And you still take it upon yourself to go there, right? And then you pull something and something fall, hit your leg or something. Then you're like, what is this? So that's two different types of experiences. I feel like that, okay. is, I feel like that is the majority of people, like 90, 95% of the time. No, it's a, yeah. They tell you, yeah. don't go <laughs> and use them. Yeah. Like, yeah. There's yeah, there are some things, there are some things that going in did you 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 sometimes know better, right? Now Jesus died for that, so you, you don't condemn yourself, you don't you don't you don't uh uh live you know in self -pity. all these things can happen is living in self-pity, all this kind of stuff. Sometimes we make genuine mistakes, right? But not all unpleasant things, right? are necessarily things that God say, yeah, let me put you through that, right? J Jesus said, in this life, there will be challenges, <laughs> right? That is a given, right? But sometimes I think we have the ability to introduce challenges that would have not uh, had to be an experience, but we go and introduce that. And uh, I think it's important to differentiate between the two. All right. All right. So, so, I mean, that's a lot and very insightful as usual. Um, I can't even say anything, but I know for sure what you just talked about is something that will hit home for a lot of people in terms of knowing, but walking into the abyss nonetheless. Um, but to jump into the substance of what we wanted to talk about today, now that any of this was not beneficial at all, um, going against the grain, um, because we started off by saying, you know, at, at, at the outset, you need to know what is for you, you need to know it. I mean, a lot of our discussions always come back down to knowing what you're supposed to be doing and knowing what God has for you to do, aka purpose, right. So, process or your, your walk us through your coming into understanding what your purpose was and you making some sudden turns without indicator lights um, to life, you know, and how that works out for you and how you manage. Because, I mean, a lot of what we do at WTT is, yes, a lot of the times we know the road that people walk, but what we try to capitalize on is the process, like how people, the how, how people walk through, how people reason things through, 
you know, and how they determine what they needed to do when they needed to do it. So, um, tell us about your, your biggest curve, well, the curve that I know about. Okay. So, um, I, I think if, if, you know, I could talk about my story in particular, and I could talk about that in whatever way, but I, I, in addition to that, I think what can be beneficial is as you talk about the process, I could highlight things that I think is a process for that, right? So I think when it comes to navigating life and making decisions, there are three very important factors. I think the first is the first is God. The second is yourself. And the third is people. And they all of these things, right? God orchestrating them all, of course, play into moving any one person along the path that God has for them. So make no mistake, there is a very specific path uh, or course, or Paul call it a race. Jesus say he finished it, this complete. Everybody has something specific to do, right? A predestined path, right? Uh, God says in Jeremiah, he knew us since we know our mother's tummy, right? He predestined. He knows the life that we have. Now, God could know that and is willing to share that in pieces as we go along life, right? We have to want that. So, so somebody can want something more for you than you want for yourself, right? So we, we have to, and many times... <laughs> God wants way more for us than sometimes we want for ourselves, right? But I think people, they, everybody has an onus on them to ask God what it is you would like me to do, right? And as God reveals that, then you have a responsibility, right, to obey and to live a life that... that put you towards where it is you want to go. Now, people come into the picture now, right? Younger, younger, young, in a younger life, when you, one is younger, I think parents and siblings and people you grew up with, right? None of that is by mistake, right? I, I think it all plays in together to think, but I don't want to talk too esoteric or be too, um, Philosophical, right? I think if you look at yourself, there are things somebody likes to do, right? There are capabilities people have. There are gifts. You call them gifts, right? Right? There are things people like to do, right? And I think as you realize those things you like to do and what you're gifted to do, now, you can realize it, but that's a lot of times where people come in. Because I believe if you genuinely serve God, God will place the right people in your life, from your parents to friends to leaders, right? That will help. So in my case, I believe it started with uh, parents, certain siblings. I think that um, very early on, formatively church and um so my parents siblings then church uh particularly a set of uh youth leaders that they were uh between a very i would call it probably one of the most formative periods of my life if you're asking me my story right and that's between like uh 13 years old to probably like around 18 -ish years old right because there was a uh, Sister Buta Henry, and then Huey and Patrice Coffey, right? And those people were unequivocally, undoubtedly in my, I know 100% sure, uh, in addition to my parents, played an extremely formative role in guiding and directing into purpose. So did Pastor Griffith and Sister Beverly. So, they, I, so I, 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 you could never get lost on the people because there are people that God places, nobody in your life is by mistake. Even if parents 
was a positive experience or negative experience, God in his wisdom orchestrates things from the beginning so you can sort of see where you're going to go and stuff. Now, I believe because God develops us and because developing takes something sometimes, God sort of begins after a while to play, uh, not play, but to engage in a matching thing, right? So if you were to put forward X, God go in X with you, right? If you make yourself available, God make himself available. If you're willing to do this, you do this. And I believe the more you do that, the more God could show you, right? The, the Bible says in Habakkuk, right? Um, the, the prophet says, you know what, Lord, I'm crying out to you. I'm confused. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. And God say, hey, if you call out to me and you truly, I'm paraphrasing you. If you call out to me and you truly, truly mean it, I will begin to show you things you wouldn't even believe I show you. Right? So there, there is an aspect of purpose that God engages in reciprocity with us. If, you, if you're serious, i serious. Right? I love you. You're going to heaven. But if you really want to walk this path, right, that thing, right, you engage with me and I will show you. No, I would say, I personally believe it isn't easy because sometimes the things God asks you to do, when you do that, could be things that are very counterintuitive. Sometimes, not all the time. Right? And I mean, I, I tell people sometimes that if you look at Jesus, Jesus was a real example of that, right? Jesus was living his purpose, going to do his purpose, but the, the demand of the purpose had Jesus asking if the cup would pass him. <laughs> right? Jesus asked God, hey, I know this needs to be done, but could this cup pass me, please? You know? The answer was no, right? I mean, there they are, they are things. So I just think making, I don't want to sound too overly spiritual, but I really believe that this stuff is making yourself available, right? And what inevitably happens is if you become available, think about it. You're running a business, right? We like it to God's kingdom. You're running a business, right? You're running a kingdom. And you have different people in the kingdom, right? But you inside your room, you are the general manager. They say God in heaven, right? So God is general manager of his kingdom, right? You, 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 you in the king, you, you managing your business, you're the general manager, right? You have real thing to do, orchestrating, engineering, planning, strategizing that God does, right? The door open to your office. You have real thing going on in the kingdom. You have different types of assignments. You have some people need to go and write a bill. Somebody need to go and drop something down the road. Somebody need to watch um, over the money. Somebody need to go and deal with suppliers, all that sort of stuff. When you start to give work and task out, as you're running that general thing, right? And you in that office right through, right? And that door to your office always open. And it has some people in the kingdom always come in and check for you every day. Hey, general manager, how you doing? What going on? I could do anything for you there. Hey, general manager, how you doing? I could do anything for you there. You know what will start happening to those people? They will get more things to do because they make themselves available. It don't mean they're not in the business. It don't mean they're not, others not in the business or the kingdom, but they're not in front of the GM. You're not in front of the GM. If you're not in front of the GM, when you are signing things out, what, what, what do you, right? When it comes, oh, you know what, I have this here to do. But you have to make yourself available. I believe when you make yourself available, God begins to speak to you. And so I may say this, and then I'll stop so that we can take, I think I'm talking too much. But making it, so if somebody wants to ask, okay, man, Mark, you're saying that, but what is making yourself available? I think it's simple. You know that a song? Read your Bible, pray every day. <laughs> Wake up. Nobody needs to start off on no marathon. God not impressed with marathons, it is my belief. Right? 
everybody have a certain threshold. Everybody starts from a different point. Somebody could get up and spend three hours in the presence of the Lord every morning. That is amazing. God bless them. They have the time for that. Right? God knows what we have. He knows our responsibilities across life. Somebody taking 15 minutes to talk to God and read the Bible every day could be doing way much more than somebody taking three hours, given what they have to do. Right? How you make yourself available? Pray, talk to God. Ask him. Pray. Make a conscientious effort to read your Bible. Right? Now, that's one part. The other part of making yourself available is having an understanding of the things that you have, that God gave you, that you need to go and develop. There's a responsibility we have with giftings to go and develop it. Right? If you like to write, go and go on Google and look for how to improve writing. If you want to be a cook, go and figure out how to cook because that is another aspect of making yourself available. Think about the GM in the building. A servant come in, a worker come in and say, hey, I don't know if you know this, but I went and take a course in IT, you know. So I know I was doing this driving all the time, but I take a course in IT, you know. If you have anything to do with IT, let me know. Right? You have to be proactive. You have to be proactive. That is what we saw in the parable of the talents. Remember, right? One, two, five. Right? Initial distribution, I believe. Then it man come back. One, two turn to four, five turn to ten. Right? The person with ten, the person with four, same blessing they get. Good and faithful servant. It had nothing to do with how much you do. It's what they did. The person that had one choose to hide it. Right? Now, the interesting thing about the person that had one is this. I honestly think that person think they were doing something genuinely right. Yeah. So you could be thinking you genuinely doing something right by coasting. But God calls a coaster a wicked and lazy servant. That's a serious thing. So not being proactive, not saying, hey, GM, I went and do this. I know. I'm coming back here. Look, I'll, I'll do this. You know, I'll do this. I'll do this. I'll do this. You do things so that God could use you. You do things so he could use you. You know, and as and as you and as you do things he could use you, God I think begins to expand their borders because he sees he could trust you and he could use you in certain platforms. <laughs> I just laughed again. Can this hear me sit? Just laughing again. I ain't seen nothing. I was just, I was just saying, wow. <laughs> well, God is good. God is so, good. In the process. Mm -hmm. So, I'm not sure if I will get this story very accurate, but this way I started in your story, right? Mm -hmm. So, let's go back to, let's say, young Mark in like form five, right? Coasting, as you use the word coasting just now. I'll say coasting because. You were in school, it was always a bright fellow, so he was doing well in school. Uh, that is a relative thing. <laughs> always a bright fellow, in my opinion. Always a bright fellow, so you're doing well in school, you know, you're, you're passing your classes well, whatever, whatever, whatever. And you were on a particular path mm -hmm. and doing very well on that particular path. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I was too young to know, but um, the story I have heard is that as well as your trajectory was looking, doing well, looking well, performing well, and with a bright future in a particular direction, it's almost as if you wake up one morning and decide, well, now nah, it's something else. Mm -hmm. So I want to assume that the making yourself available was the starting point of that turn or that curve, as you want to call it. So just tell us about. I, I believe so, and and, and again, I, you know, I will tell it. But again, I believe so, but again, you know, making yourself available is a relative thing. You know, I was probably like uh, fifteen or sixteen when some of that seventeen around there when some of that um, 
So please, but that was simply asking. So what happened is I always, and you see, the thing is, is, you know, everybody's story is different. So I don't want to say, but I believe God is our master. So it can't be, you know, I can't be that unique, quite frankly, right? Um, because it's everybody, right? So, so this is how interesting. I, this is this is I say that to see how I. This is why I say what I say in terms of purpose and stuff is inextricably linked to the situation. God have you born into what? Like what? What? Like oh, so, so what I wanted to do was um, be a, a geologist or a geophysicist, right? But being a geologist and geophysicist was a function of something, right? So when I was younger, our father had purchased a National Geographic junior set, and I chose to read it, right? And in reading that, I began to do like things like the environment and sciences and this sort of stuff. And then what compounded that, interestingly, was a job that our father had dealt with transport and stuff for people that worked on oil rigs and stuff like that and somehow through the workings of something some of our meta geologists some of it and they just connected like that so that's what i wanted to do right and that is what i had studied for and was doing pretty okay it was around that time when i'd finished written of cxc or finished high school according to what people write uh, um i started to um Remember, while that is going on in school, right? I think the more important thing to note is what happens simultaneous to that is a lot of stuff going on in youth group, in church, um, friends. And I started to run into a lot of work done by uh, Dr. Myers Monroe on purpose. And interestingly, I still have the cassette somewhere there because. Uh, um, my best friend told me, hey, I'll take this thing from uh, Dr. Myers Monroe, right? I have this tape here, take this tape, and this tape, he just give me the tape, right? This was done. Now, just he was, he, Dr. Myers Monroe had taught all over the world. Right? This particular one, he was in Trinidad and Tobago. So they took a tape of it, right? And he started to talk about purpose. And something about that resonated with me. And I just literally start to ask God, hey, God, what's my purpose? What is my purpose? But I'm uh, being honest, you can't take credit for something. The Bible say, you know, God works in us to will and to do for good pleasure. So somehow God made me excited to go and try and find books on purpose. So I did do that. I didn't just stop at, yeah, I want to find the purpose, right? I literally went and looked for like books on purpose, books he had written when I hear the tape, go find books, listen to books as a listener and a read and this, I start to pray. And then it was um, at that point in time, so this is the funny thing, right? As I was praying about purpose, um, the television was on um, one day and we was watching the business channel again because of what uh, that he had they do something like that and not something like that because of what he did his profession right and i think last last um thing i told you all i started to look at some of the magazines started to look at some of the things and as i prayed about purpose and stuff i start to like some of that material more than what i think right so then I was praying, 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 and at that particular point in time, I, I heard God tell me to leave what was then sixth form and to go to another school and go back to form four to study business, right? And um, economics and um, business and social science and studies and stuff like that. And thankful to God, I shared that with my parents. <laughs> And let's stick up in let's stick up in right there so we could take this thing in phases, right? Okay. So you in lower six or yeah. something, right? Yeah. That's A levels for people mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. outside. That's A that's A levels. So you spend five years of your life, your secondary school life, studying your sciences to be a geophysicist or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you find purpose and you start to pray and boom. Mm -hmm. Leave form six 
and go back to Form 4. I mean, right now, that might not sound like much, but you're talking about at least three years there. Yeah. Right? Did you question God? Did you question yourself? I questioned myself. I didn't question God. I questioned myself, to be honest. I questioned myself because I wanted to make sure this was something that um, I believed um, that God told me to do. And I think after praying, I was really convinced that God told me to do it. And I went and spoke about it to my parents. And they said, we support you. It's interesting. I, 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 I can't remember whether it was... Uh, daddy or mommy that went with me to the office to go to the other school. But when I was going to the other school, the people in the other school, when they looked at where I was coming from and what I was doing, I was just like, why do you want to like this? Do make any, I mean, you could join, you could join, but it don't make any sense. And I had to tell him, I believe God telling me to do that. And this is what I say, because you're, you're in form six. And as I said before, he's a bright fella, right? So, you had your seven or eight passes, proper, proper passes. You're in your form six class in a prestigious school where people telling the outside world telling itself, well, yeah, this boy, this boy onto something. And then you went back to form four. Yeah. I person, I tell you, me personally, I was beginning to question everything. I studied in the time that I spent. I studied in what people, people would think I crazy mm -hmm. right and then yes yeah, you say and then <laughs> i might have like four or five conversations with myself with how i even beginning to go and talk to my parents to say i am your child with a very good certificate doing very well in school come and say i want to go back to form four mm -hmm. yeah because at that point that that's the motion yes because you're leaving a prestigious school yeah you're going back to form four, and then you're going, you're going to be going back to form for three yeah. years older than your classmates. Yeah. And I would say it is the first of various subsequent actions that looked like demotions. Yeah. It, 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 you see, that that's the thing, right? Um, um, um they, they, uh, my belief is, or my experience has been. When God uses people, it is my belief. I don't want to get on too much heights. But but God properly using you isn't cheap. Um, God, you know, giving you the capability to do certain things, that comes, I think, with our cost. It's not cheap. God can't make that cheap. So some of the things you get asked to do, I believe, right? I mean, has been the case, you know, even right now. I mean, like there are things where God asks you to do things that really and truly is like, what? But because of what you did before and because of what you're doing now, I think, some people put themselves in a position for God to be able to ask you. It's like the GM. This man, master in the delivery division, but he went and do things in IT. So then go, okay, come on, run IT here for a second, but we can driving drive in truck now and run IT. Yeah, right? I, I think the biggest thing to remember is that God is interested. So, so I went back to Form 4, and I will tell you, I believe, that I will show, I don't have it, I had it somewhere, I put it away. I put it away. Let me, you can give me 30 seconds because I think it will bring a point. I could pause for 30 seconds or they can talk about something because I want to say, I want to show something real quick, right? Give me 30 seconds. Sure. Candice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um. How you feel about a move from form six to form sure. four? Le leaving a prestigious school. And I think even at that age, like your maturity, like now you're saying, but fix your form six, you. <laughs> form six, you go back to form four. 
that that just I, don't know. I just my my thought like that's a real big move and stuff but i know myself i am a i am an overthinker naturally and the kind of pressure i would have been under so like me like is this like what you're really telling yourself is it really god telling you to do this you telling yourself to do this but then what if it don't work like what if like mm -hmm. what ifs mm -hmm. what if sort of blow my mind to pieces because what is because having this conversation there's something that i want to do i think what is telling me to do is i mentioned to my parents a couple of times and then like it came back, like the Holy Spirit was about time I was this conversation, and I tell myself, I said, Can this what if this does not work? <laughs> like literally, I'm listening to my and I'm remembering this thing, and I'm saying, Can this what if that's just like it don't come true, it don't work. So that right, is the first, the first thing I go and tell myself is Matilda, you're not serious, and I go and try to put my mind on the subjection because I tell and myself yeah, it's my mind. That is the age is the age 17. Yeah, yeah man, you, you found it? Yes, I found it. So I was cleaning, doing some stuff recently, and I found the everybody when they were leaving that school that I went back to form for. Um, when everybody was graduating, you had a kind of copy book and you give to your friends to just write something, right. And what I was saying is this. What sometimes we think are the emotions is God putting you in places to, it's not always about yourself, right? God is in the people business, right? So you will have people that I interacted with over the two years that I spent there, right? that I honestly believe God intended for those interactions to happen. It had not, I, for those people, so this is, this is the book here, right? There is Mark, you've been a major, this is going back to form four, right? A demotion, right? You've been a major inspiration to all who have been around you and me, believe it or not, some of the stuff we talked about, what you had to say had a major impact on me and you renewed my faith in many things. You're great to be around. I mean, some of this, I don't know, guys like you are hard to, I don't need to read into that. Yeah. <laughs> um, let me see. No, no. I just showed you, this is a book of people just talking and when you sit down and talk to some people and realize the situations they were in, and the time that God sent you, I mean, I talk about things like domestic violence and leading people to the Lord. And it's, it's just phenomenal when you look at God's timing. So this is the book and this does be a very good reminder to me. You know, you know, you know, you know, Jesus said that in this life, there's nobody who will decide to serve him, make themselves available and give up things that in this life he wouldn't reward them again with what they gave up, right? But serving God, I believe, comes with a cost. Some of the things God's going to ask you to do, you have to pay a certain type of price. Sometimes it comes in the feeling the motion. Sometimes it comes in people, people, God putting your life frustrating you. And using you and manipulating you and all these types of things. But those are situations that make people into the person. Mm -hmm. My wife and I were talking the other day, and I like, I like, uh, um, I learn a lot from because when she read the word, um, and she shares it, God Arthur shares it, really, really helped me. The other day, she shared something about Joseph, right? And Joseph was manipulated in Potiphar's house, right? But do you know that is in that same Potiphar's house where he was a slave, he went in as a slave and he started to run the house, right? 
the skill set of running that house while being eventually manipulated and sent to prison. But the skill set of administration is there he picked that up. And years later, right? So that by his father, by his father, by his father, the motion gets sold into slavery. Learn administration in Potiphar's house. And years later, it's that administrative skill that helped save an entire country during a drought. But that was a season. When finishing that season now, it was on to prison because he got manipulated, right? But when he got manipulated and he went to prison now, it was a different skill set that get used and as he dreams, right? And soon he was running the prison too, right? So it, 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 when God asks us to do things to move, right, there's something in that move that benefits others and you grow and develop. That's what I believe. I see that yeah. Matilda will pick off or something. Oh, no, she sees back on. We, um, we, um, we way over time. Are we, we are talking too much? No, 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 it's fine. Okay, okay. Now, I want to say something to whenever it's up. Um, Joseph's story, um, sometimes but the whole theme, curve or be curve, you made a decision to go mm -hmm. back to form four. Sometimes persons are placed in situations where they didn't make a decision. Certain mm -hmm. things happened. Somebody passed away. They were fired. Our relationship or our friendship broke up. It's not a choice that they made. It's not something that they thought about and say, okay, I will decide or I choose to do this. Joseph didn't choose to be sold by his brother. No. It just happened. Yes. So happened. sometimes, sometimes, some situations just happen. Yes. And and we have to deal with it the same way. Yes. That you would have dealt with it. That's not to make that point. Yeah, that's a very that's a very very good point. Situations happen, right? And this is the this is the discourse of life, you know, where things happen and some things are out of your control, and you deal with them. So, um, your point, we make a little bit to your point about understanding um timing, God's timing, and what He did, and the people you would have come in you would have come in to the people you would have encountered, right? Mm -hmm. um, because had you remained where you were, you would have never met any of the people that would have written in that book. Right? No. You would have never had um, that level of impact in that sphere, right? But that emotion didn't only benefit them in that sense and benefit you in the sense of sharing, but it also was a catapult or it was a launching pad for you and yourself yeah, into yes. where you are today. So yeah. if you could tell us a bit of how you went from that emotion benefiting and sharing, because there's always, and I agree with you 100% that every step of the way, regardless of what the situation is, there is learning for you and there is benefit to others in your learning process as well. Right, yeah. but your capitalization, capitalization, I'm, I'm tying up my mouth today. Your, your capitalization of the demotion would have come for you in yourself, would have come a little bit after. So, right, yes. so it comes, it comes a, a bit after, right? So, I do that and then I graduate, and then I wanted to go to university, but boom, lo and behold, because I didn't do A levels, so I'll be good. Because I didn't do A levels, now I wanted to go and study like um, economics and stuff. So because I didn't do A levels, uh, I had to go now and do A levels again. So I st start to sign into economics A levels, and while doing that, I, did, I, I got a job for a period of time. And at that particular point in time, that job was like. Uh, working in a manufacturing place and lifting up like bags of salt and stuff like that to do manufacturing stuff, you know, and, you know, in that particular environment, you know, the people again will wonder like, what, like, what, 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 what you really about, you know, but yeah, yeah, all these things are things that go thing. And you see, it's, it's very interesting 
So at that particular point, I had a desire to like go to go uh, at that point in the U.S. to study. And I'll be honest with you, I started to make want that, but started to make alternative plans to to probably go and look to study at uh, the University of West Indies on in the Mona campus. So I think in Barbados or somewhere there. And I was studying for that. I was studying for that, and I was I was driving in the car with my father. And we were, you know, Mount Hope Junction there. I never forget it. In Mount Hope Junction, I was telling him some of those plans. And this is why I say purpose, like a lot of these things, like what I can sit down here and do, I'm being honest, I cannot sit there. Everything accomplishment is relative, right? In addition to that, I, I cannot sit down and take credit for like, everything because it's just not me so like for instance go in there and i was like okay this is and my father said then hey i understand everything but why you want to do that you have an international call on your life right and that right there i don't even know if i ever tell my father that that right there changed my perspective like okay okay all right so then I said, okay, let me go now and go to try to go to university away. So I obey God, so I trust in God now. So then I went on right here to write SATs to go. And I was excited to go. Oh, no, 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 no. This is what happened. After, before my father told me that, what I did was went and write SATs, but I didn't get a good score. Hmm. So the first time I wrote it, I didn't get a good score. Well, I didn't get the score I wanted to get right uh there's certain scores to get scholarships and that particular score i would not got no scholarship and i was very discouraged and i was crying and very discouraged and at that particular point in time you see the dream and the desire to go away and study economics was there but the first time i went and did it the, i didn't do well on the exam so it is not doing well on that part i said you know what let me start to make alternative plans so that is when I started to think about, okay, let me go and start to look for some other universities around so I can stay close to home and stuff. Probably that thing not thing, right? And then my dad said that. Then I decided to give it another shot. And it's on that other um, attempt that one day I was coming home and, well, my my uh, sister, not Matilda, Marcy, the one right after me, at that particular point in time, she joke around a lot. I think she still joke around a lot, a lot of the times in a good way. So <laughs> one day I came home and she was like, Mark, I don't know, but some lady just called there about some scholarship thing. Look, I'll leave the number there for you. Right? But I don't know <laughs> if she was being serious, if she was joking, but that is, and then I got a scholarship to, 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 to come here. But there's so much, it's very tough to talk about all the details and all the turnings and all the things and that's why i say i was just extracting up a couple levels up in terms of process like if to share with people instead of like giving them the minutia of it is like it's like three parts is god yourself and other people and the interaction that making yourself available for god allows you he begins to talk to you and as he talks to you you have a part to play with developing yourself right you have a part to play so you know what i didn't mention a lot between there is staying up and studying or studying a lot right not being able sometimes to lime as much right um um and liming yeah to balance life right but there's a price to to pay there's a cost the things right um jesus says it perfectly before anybody builds a house or concerns themselves with building a house they need to consider the cost there's a cost we need to consider right because curving or being curved gonna come anyway mm -hmm. right it gonna come anyway right um but the one of the ways to curve like self-initiated curve is to be proactive like those two servants that went and multiplied the talents you have to do that you have to do that 
And what does that mean? What does multiplying talents mean? Multiplying talents means simply being productive. What does being productive mean? Being productive means, hey, Lord, I think you give me this. If I wrong you, stop me. Me and my, me and my wife, we have the thing when we pray. We say, God, if it's you, close the door. If it's you, open the door. Simple. That simple prayer has helped us. Open the door if it's you, close the door if it's not you. Right? But sometimes, right, you could stand up here. I could stand up here and say, God, if that door is you, open it. Open. If that door is not you, shut it. Right? But sometimes I wonder if God does say, oh, but he running into the door. Let me shut it. Let me shut it. Yeah, because I'm running into the door. Right? So if it's not God, you say, all right, all right, all right, all right. He active, he active. Let me close the door now. This one is new. We you stay from far back and you don't know what the door open, but you're not doing anything. You see what they're saying? Stay, be active. Do, be productive. Right? Be, be, being productive. And look, I, I want to say this. All of us are given things to participate and contribute in the house of the Lord. And that is good. And that is honorable. Being productive is not defined as just doing stuff in church. Being productive is doing stuff, period, where you are. God, everybody, you know, the thing that talk about salt, you ever, you ever eat callaloo and all the salt bunch up in a bowl somewhere, it don't taste good. All the salt can bunch up in one place. That's why we all need to do different things. Do different things. Exercise different types of things. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. think this conversation going all over the place, but I, I think it... No, I, that's fine. It's a conversation. Yeah, because yeah. the question I want to ask here is... I mean, you answered plenty times, but let me take this one first. So we all know... Well, not we all know. Last week, we would have introduced you as Dr. Scott mm -hmm. and the fact that you're a doctor of philosophy or university lecturer, professor, and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Do you ever wonder like the what if like what if you had stayed the original course that was working for you like what if what if there would have been more on that side what if or do you have because of the process you went through that conviction and that contentment that you are exactly where god has you to be you're fulfilling that which god sends you to fulfill and working towards fulfilling even more those other things that he would have put in there. Yeah, so this is what I will say. And I'm being honest, I'm not trying to song on any heights or anything. For me personally, my, my number one aim in existence, this is my view, is when I go to heaven that I did what I was put here to do. So that will mean, right, that I have to make a decision that according to the path that God has for me, certain paths come with certain things practically. So let me give you an example. If God has somebody to be involved consistently in missions work, in Sub-Saharan Africa, Sub-Saharan oh, Sub Africa, Southeast Asia, Eastern Europe, wherever, right? And you have to be in the field. That's what God has you. God give you a heart for that, right? Really, that person, it is difficult to turn and watch somebody who God has to be in the financial services or Wall Street or big, driving a Mercedes Maybach and screwing <laughs> or having an issue. <laughs> Right? Certain yeah. things come with certain callings. Certain parts come with certain things. And what I have just... And the talks you were talking about as well. Right. And, and what I have to realize is I have to get comfortable with the fact that God's part for me would be commensurate with certain things. Right? And the chances are 
in this life, you will always see somebody who doing better than you, better, right? In the way the world measures better, there will always be, Jesus said, people are doing not as good as you, right? So to answer that question, I really honestly don't spend a lot of time thinking about what would have happened if I had, because I think if I had, I wouldn't be in God's will. So I, I'm very happy doing uh, what, no, you're human, you're human, right? So you will think about things at times, but you, you have to quickly pull yourself back, pull yourself together, get yourself in order and realize, hey, this is a, this is a, this is a thing. And again, not on too much time, but look at what Jesus gave up to do his work. This is an example. Jesus, we be, people need to realize Jesus is an ex, Jesus came to die on the cross for us, which is what he did. But in doing that, when you look at his life, he is an example in so in, in all things, right? He's an example. You come from a particular uh, situation, right? Jesus take the, the biggest demotion in the world, right? Heaven come to earth. This, I was talking about my the day. Check it out. Jesus come to earth. Jesus is a king. He could have come be born in all kind of palace and thing. <laughs> Take it in a minute. Yes. Right? Um, I, and, and, and I think that one of the... I think, it is my view, that a precursor to being used a certain way by God and I, and I pray that I'm able to be used in this way as God sees fit. I believe a precursor to being used by God as a is 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 is, is the situations you'll be put in that humble you. Yeah. What humble you? You know, I really am. Um, we have to exercise humility. I really mulling over your point about the cost of your road because. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there are different. I mean, we we reason life and we discuss life and say both of us, you both, you, me, and Candace and I do it as well. We sit down and you really look at life and what life is, and particularly mm -hmm. as a Christian person. Um, you know, a lot of the times people can't understand some of the choices and some of the decisions that you make, right? And sometimes you yourself can't understand some of the choices and the decisions that you make. I've been very frank. Mm -hmm. Um but, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice reminder for me in this discussion, you know, of remembering what you have to do. F first of all, figuring out what you need to do. And when you do that and you figure it out, is remembering that, as you say, your car be called to be a missionary somewhere or something. And expect to be rolling around in a Rolls Royce. Yeah, you got. I mean, I mean, God could do it, and it could happen that way, right? But yeah, there are yeah. certain walks, and there are certain things, you know, that if if this is the trajectory, if this is the line, if this is the the life God has for you, there are certain things that fit that life. There is another man somewhere that God has him to be some big. Um, conglomerate some big you know something somewhere and that's that's his lane right um but i say for me one of my struggles because i was i have a very small move story um you know i would have gone to the pieces of becoming an attorney at law you're very excited to become an attorney at law and everything that everybody sees being an attorney you know you're going to court and you're doing what and you know you're you're you're, you're living that life but I arrived and I spent some time there and I, I too was doing well. And I was told that I was doing well and people, you know, would encourage me that, you know, whatever, whatever you're doing so well, you do whatever, whatever. And I just had a very, um, 2019 was an interesting year for me where I felt despite accomplishing what a lot of my peers would have wanted to accomplish at the time, I didn't feel very um, accomplished. I didn't feel very contented i didn't feel very satisfied and that put me on an even bigger quest like lord like where is this how i reach it i spend time i spend money i spend effort and i reach it and it's like you know a total set of confusion and i remember when 
I finally came to terms with the decision that I did not want to be in private practice and did not want to be um, didn't want to be in private practice. When I would have communicated it to some of my colleagues and stuff, it's like, but why you wouldn't want to be in private practice? You do such a good job at this, whatever, whatever. And it's important. And you said it earlier. You spoke about um, people being important. Yes. And people's intentions for you sometimes are very good. They want things that, you know, they want, they want things for you. They want the best for you. But sometimes what people want for you, although as well-intentioned and as good as it might be, when you really settle with yourself, you realize that's not what God wants for you. And that's not where you ought to function. But I struggle a lot with going against, I struggle a lot with throwing the curve, with, with going against what um, everybody expected, what everybody would have wanted for you, what everybody, and understanding that, you know, this just really is, is not me. And you're right. It took a lot of, uh, well, probably it was easier for you than for me, but it took a lot of, prayer and a lot of discussions with myself, con literal conversations with myself, like Matilda, you know, da, 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 da. and remember, if this is your end goal and this is what God has for you to do, and I know what that is, can you reasonably do that where you are? And the answer is no. And it's exactly what you were saying. The road, the course, the opportunities, they have to match, and they all match based on purpose. So it's a very interesting, a nice reminder, because I ain't finished yet. And now start, you know, and it's a continuing journey. So it's good to glean the perspective, glean, glean from you, somebody who running a fair amount ahead of me, you know, and this kind of the reason why we have the discussions, you know, to help people navigate and help people understand and help people to, you know. Yeah, I, I think the core... Sorry, I, I think, sorry, sorry. No, I, you go ahead, I finish. I think the core is asking God what you should do. I think, I, I really don't want to song on too much ice, but I think that's where it begins. God is faithful enough, if you truly mean that, to make known to you what it is he wants you to do. Now, I don't know how much people here ever had to go to the principal's office for any reason. I have had to do that on occasion, right? And the reality is, this is true 100% reality, no matter what we want to hear, because the parable of the, 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 the 10, the talents give us in a, a, a preview. There is a point that every single one of us on this call, whether we want to think about that or not, will be going to the principal's office. Your friend's not going with you. Your brother not going with you. Your sister not going with you. Your spouse not going with you. Your best friend not going with you. Right? And the principal is God. And he is going to ask, what did you do? with what I gave you. That is reality, right? Um, and that need not be an intimidating thing for this reason. If God go and do that in the future, he will never put you in that situation if he was not willing to show you exactly what he wanted you to do. So that's the way yeah. to look at it in reverse. Right? So that means if you earnestly ask God, he wouldn't put, he, he cannot examine you on something he didn't give you resources to do. Right? But not because resources are available. People use it. Right? So a lot of the times the work God has is like, all right, God say, hey, here what's going on? A year from now, you need to be able to you see that big tree, so you need to be able to push that down. That's my purpose for you. That's part of my task for you a year from now. And, okay, I need to go and push down a tree. So I need to be strong. I need to understand about trees, right? Lord, what should I do? I'm waiting for next year and, and a gym right there. And a book on trees right there. And I think that is where we make the mistake a lot of times. 
It is being proactive with what we believe God has given us. If I, this is something I want to say about this. I, I have no biblical backing for what I'm about to say, but there's nothing I'm going to say that is um, 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 misleading in any way. I just don't want to say, because I don't have any biblical backing for it, but it's something I believe, and it's this. I believe, right? And again, I'm not telling anybody that this is some written rule anyway. I honestly believe that God is so faithful that even if I took an action believing it was him, because I took the action believing it was him, even if it wasn't the action he wanted me to take, his grace covers that and he blesses that intention. That intention, he will fine tune you even more. Say, all right, I see you was willing to act because in your heart, you thought it was me. All right, this is actually what I want you to do. You see what I'm saying? So I, I can't say God say that anybody, but what, what I could say is I really believe that. Right, I believe as people we should act. We should we should be productive. We should act. You know, Amatila, I think anybody have a question, anything or not? Well, now is that time. I mean, Candice, curve, go curve, comments. Yeah, no, I actually, I actually just took it all in. Yes, I have no. Yes, I have two experiences, but nothing. I feel led to share, and um, no, I just, I just took in it all. I don't have anything to add or take away at the moment. What is it, too, man? I, I, I think things are, you know, life when we serve God, God promises us to be victorious. He doesn't promise us things will be easy. That is a mistake sometimes we make, right? To get things, not easy. To make yourself available, not easy. God promised victory. He promised a roadmap and he promised to tell you how to go, which road to pass on and these types of things. But it don't mean around the road, you mightn't be walking and somebody dog, hypothetically speaking, somebody leave the gate open and a dog run out and you have to deal with it and stuff like that, right? What God tell you is you'll get to the destination. Right, but but you have to. It, it's just is a is a is a cost. I that 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 that's what I believe in. Curve and be curve. In either one of those things, there's a cost. Yeah, a cost. And the refining. Yeah, the cost and the refining. The refining, right? And the refining, the refining is what God needs. You know, you know, you all know olive oil. Or grape juice. The finer the olive oil, the finer the grape juice. You know what drives it? How much it was pressed. Hmm. So the finest quality olive oil was just pressed harder than less quality olive oil. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? I just think it's it's just it, in this life, <laughs> in this life, it, there's just there's just that stuff that occurs, and that's something we have to, you know. You know, yeah, yeah. You know, and what I what I want to say, don't wait for perfection, you know. Anybody that listen, I think you don't need to be perfect. You don't wait for perfection, you don't need for things to be perfect to begin to take an act. If you could get up and pray for five minutes and ask God for five minutes a day what to do, try it. You know, there have been times along the way I was very pressed for time. There's certain things like to do to develop myself that I could only squeeze in 15 minutes a day while doing it. I'm doing it. I've taken that book and I open it, and only 15 minutes I could do today. I do it. You know what I'm saying? I do it. You know, the Bible say, as believers, we live a life where we live by faith and not by sight. Now we we know that, and it sounds as to me. When we translate that, what it means is we live a life exhibiting behavior. That matches where we want to go, not what we see in. So your behavior today, 
have to match where you want to go and not to the scene. There was a point in time I had finished my master's degree and the job I had got was sweeping a back, a back room at a particular place with people that were equally as important. I mean, life just so had it that they probably didn't get the schooling I did, right? And a couple of those people treated me a particular way. I, I never told them what my education background was or anything like that. So a couple of those people treated me a particular way that wasn't uh, potentially good. I had a close friend of mine. He's a close friend today. This is the way he's talking. Same thing. He graduated and he took a job too in the same type of situation but different. He, he quit after two days because... The the the, the 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 pressure of the situation is as such as it is. But the reason I tell that story is this: while I was doing that, I wanted to do certain things. When I was not working, I wanted to get a certain job, and it was taking long. I will get up, put on a tie, put on a shirt, and sit down inside the living room. Mm. I get up as I go into work for the job as I want. I have nowhere to go, but I'm getting up, putting on a tie and a shirt and sitting down in there, literally praying and waiting for the phone to ring. And one day it rang, right? Now, there are many people that have many stories like that. What I'm trying to say is no matter what, that story is unique, right? It have no favorites in this thing. What it is, is... God asks us to live a life. He's asking us to do that. He says, live a life of faith, we work by faith. And what that means is exhibit behaviors today that are in alignment with what you see and you know God wants you to do or what you want, not what you're seeing, not what you're feeling. You know what I'm saying? And that it's tougher to do, but you have to practice. Practice it for five minutes. Sometimes I was practicing and say, God, I can't faith, boy, this hard. You know, that's my part in the Bible say, the man say, God, I believe eh? that some of them don't believe, the part of me that don't believe, help my unbelief. Mm -hmm. And it has situations, if you have to grow in faith, it means that there are points where for it to grow, there are situations where it seems a little bigger and your faith might get a little wobbly. But that's what you have to do to strengthen it. Mm. Use it. Use the muscle. You know? So, I don't know how we end up here, but... No, we end up there for good reason, yeah? Because I will be honest. You just dropped aligned as a confirmation for me with something I was praying about today. Which is awesome. Which yeah, is yeah. Really and, yeah. 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 Huh? No, no, sorry. No, you go. You, I just, I don't know why I just, it keep on my mind if anybody have a question. The one thing I want to say, and I don't know who need to hear it, but God does want to use us, but the anointing of God is not cheap. It's not cheap. Mm -hmm. That not cheap. Salvation free. The anointing not cheap. Not cheap. You have to go through some things. <laughs> and I, I mean, big to big, right? <laughs> if, if Mark even understands what that means. And, yeah, Candace, yeah. and I talk about this all the time. Sometimes... Keep it 100. Like, we see it is, keep it 100. We're keeping it 100. Yeah. Big to big, I feel like tough. That's like, but but like Lord, like, but what is you have for me to do so? Yeah, <laughs> like wait is like wait, and as not and I'm not talking. This is not comparison, no. But you know, you will look. You're human, right? And it's not comparison, but you're looking around and you're seeing to yourself. But people progressing, people doing things, and you know, you you probably not progressing, or you not things are happening for you in a particular area as you would like it to happen. But you just sit on there and it's like Lord, but I'm praying. I throw it a little fast there. I help him, my brothers. I need help. I give in and but but like Lord, what how much press, how much wine, how much, how much I was trashing floor, how much times you're reaching trash and floor, how much times you're going and get pressed for the olive oil, mm -hmm. and it's like a drip. Mm -hmm. right? And I ask God, like, God, like what like what kind of life it is you really want me to live that I have to be going through this long, long, long refining process. But for me, my take home in everything we discussed today is see that that last gem you dropped there with um, 
want any job and you get up and you put on your shirt and your tie and you sit down, whatever. That's really, really important. Because in the last couple of days, like um I was there are certain times of the year when I tend to be very reflective, right? And this is one. And sitting on like Lord, you know, certain things that you're praying on, you're waiting on, waiting for it to happen. And you're trying to do what you do, what you say, be productive while waiting. Right? Be productive while waiting. And you know, I believe it's the Lord said to me, well, you know, you have to, the last step of your process is. Be exactly what you're waiting for. Do exactly what it is you're waiting for. Mm -hmm. And I said on it, but how? But if a man put on a shirt and a tie and a pants and sit on in his living room when he has no job because he wants a job, then there's there's any little act. And I will also read that also you now come back to me. A scripture you shared with me um very recently, like late last year, Mark. Um, and it's in I think it's James two. I think it's James. Um, and it verses something, 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 but works is what perfects faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like mm -hmm. you have faith, yes, and faith is the evidence of things not seen, what everything hoped for, but your work is what perfects the faith that you have. So you have to get up and you have to actually do. And like you say, I don't know how we reach here, but that's my take home. Um, Mark, it have no questions. Good. I'm not any really questions now, but people there, they're there. They're there. They listen. No, no, I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't wondering if people were there. Or I just didn't know if anybody. No, 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 I know. Yeah. But I just thought, you know, they're there. They're taking in your thing, word for word. They say they're talking because they don't want to miss anything you're saying, right? But they're there, you know. Um, it's and yeah, no, it's powerful. But you know, just to real quickly, with the whole faith. So the Bible says, "Faith without works is dead." That's what we know, it, right? So again, if God command us to operate in faith, but faith without works is ineffective, God don't want us to just make up the works part. God way more sophisticated, organized than that. When the word works means acts of obedience. Faith without acts of obedience is ineffective. So it has something here God wants to accomplish. And you need to have faith to do it, right? So something here God wants to accomplish. Here. Here. And you need to have faith to do it. But the, the, the bridge between that faith, what gives that faith power? It needs a bridge to run on. And the bridge it runs on is acts of obedience. That means that if God asking you to have faith about something, he will also tell you what, what to, do. to do. Correct. It is when you know what to do. It don't make no sense to have all the faith if you're not doing what you know you're supposed to do. So God will ask you to do things. And having faith is doing those things Right, I think the other thing I'll say quickly the Bible say God's ways are not our ways, His thoughts are not our thoughts. As far as the heavens are away from the earth, is how far His thoughts are away from us. So, when we think something is a demotion or a delay, God is actually setting things up. We can't think like how he thinks. We 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 are limited. We the, the Bible is warned. They say, Hey, trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on to what you think. Don't put too much credit on how you think because you can't think like God. He sees things differently. So you know what it is like? Somebody say, Hey, come up the road now. I have something here waiting for you. So your friend living down the road, you living down the road. Say, come up the road, have something for you, because I know they want this, right? But you have God. So God say, hey, before you go up the road to pick it up, I know the road, I know the path, I know the path you're going to take, I know the street you're going to take, I know the time and everything. Before you go up the road, go and do this. Eye on your pants, go and take a bed, go and do this, go and do this. All this in the house. You ain't leave the house yet, but that's not a delay. The person down the street could leave the house. They're halfway up the road. 
and you still home. They call you leave yet? No. To everybody, it took like a delay. But you are following divine instruction. Right? You can wait for five years for something and go do something in one minute that catapults you above everybody else. That, yeah. that, that thing. You see what I'm saying? When you obey God, that's how it works. You know the Bible says, me and my wife does, does, does share this passage of scripture three times. The Bible say, when you serve God, he will create paths for you that were not there before and they will never be there again. That is, that is what the Bible say. You serve God and you'll be. The he will open doors for you. You ever see a door, a door there next minute is just a wall. When you go through the door, nobody else can come through that door again. See what I'm saying? God is good, man. God is good. I don't want to talk. God is good. God is good. Don't study people. People don't control no door. They could stand up by the door and hold the knob. They don't control any door. No human being control any door in your life. God in control of that door. And if they hold any door shut, God will undo the hinges on the door and lift up the whole door on the people and move them. I just yes, find good, good stuff, man. Wow. God is good. God is good too. Wow. Was it like that? You're so can you face? It's something funny with your lip. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's my thing, isn't it? Internalizing. And sometimes the reason why you're waiting a little longer, you know, I used to work at a place. And there was a gentleman that used to tell me all the time, hey, I believe you have a lot of capability. You need to bake a little more. And I always used to be like, What's, what, what are you talking about? Bake a little more. Right? Until God showed me what that is afterwards. Let me tell you something. Sometimes the reason God have us waiting a little longer for some things because we have to taste a certain way. See, Jenny preparing a nice banquet. When God preparing a nice banquet for people to come and eat of his banquet, feeding people through your gifts and talents and abilities, God can bake you for five, ten minutes and put you on the table. You wouldn't taste good. You'll be half cooked. Right? We have to stay in the oven a little longer sometimes to bake properly. So when you say, Get put on on that table and people taste it like, oh, good. Who make this? God make it. God make it. See what they're saying? When people say, this thing half cook, who make this? God, God don't want that kind of rap. God can't put something half cooked there because they say, who make this? God, boy, God make that it half cooked. You can't do that. God not going to do that. So anything he put on that table prepared. It not only you ever, you ever taste food, you ever go somewhere, the food smelling real good and you taste it and the food don't taste like it smell. God, not in that business. You have to cook properly, smell properly, and taste properly. And have good nutrients in you. And only God can cook like that. So sometimes you have to just wait a little longer. I officially talk too much, I done. <laughs> <laughs> It's just a lot to soak in. It's a lot. Good a lot though. Very, very good a lot. I am. Um, I know for myself, um, I've taken probably more than I expected to take from the episode personally. So I'm happy taking that to run with it. I take too. I lean in too. I take a note for myself here too. <laughs> so extra. So extra. So yeah, I mean, I don't have anything to add. I have no more questions. And um, yeah, it's just good. It's just good stuff. It's good to hear from you. It's good to, I mean, I believe there's nothing more beneficial than learning from people who walk a particular road before. Um, that's what we're supposed to do. Iron sharpness, iron. Um, you know, we have to clean from each other what we can. And I think, you know, is have some advice where you had to eat the meat and throw with the bone. 
Really, really, really appreciate all that first shit. And it's a good reminder because, excuse me, go back. And it's a good reminder because sometimes, uh, for me, speaking for myself, and actually for Matilda too, can I expose it now? But for us, for, for sometimes you you really, now that's your question, God, but life happens. <laughs> Let's put it that way. And um, I realized today it kind of equates your faithfulness or it kind of equates um, your loyalty or, or, or your hunger for God and what you are seeing materialistically as God's goodness towards you. That, you, you, cannot that, you cannot do that. God is so unique in all that he does and it is so much a privilege and an honor to still be beacon as, as Mark say. It's 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 an honor that God wants to take his time with you, that God is not allowing certain things to happen before it's time. It's not something that's like a curse, it's not that you're being he's withdrawing something from you. It's actually an honor. And it's a privilege to have someone take their time with you, to have someone who wants to ensure us you get the best and you are your character is built to the best of its ability. And for the first time I actually see it as a, a privilege here and you um share today, Mark. So thank you so much. I was so excited for this show. I talked to my parents. I actually listened to the, the first time I listened to the WTT own episode like three times. Like I listened to um, okay, okay. I listened to, I listened to that like the last section, I listened to like three actually screw recorded on my phone. <laughs> that it, it was really, 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 really good. I was, again, I was honestly looking forward to this episode, and I really, really appreciate your gifting because this is a perfect example of you putting your gifting to use it your talents. And I really appreciate the time you took so, um, from your family, from your job, because I know you're busy to be with Matilda and WTT. And I know I'm speaking that we have a big community. When we say this has been so good, um. Everything that you gave to us, we will swallow it. According to Matilda, I have a bone tell. You know what? God is good, and we and we help and build each other. And um, you know, I'm just trying to let you know, like people quiet. So I'm trying. You didn't have any questions, but I'm trying to let you see that your two hours of talking is not in vain. That people, oh, really, yeah. Yeah. yeah, people are taking it. Too. I know. They do that to us sometimes. I be I believe that um, you know who is who is supposed to hear will hear, and we all so this some of this thing you hear me saying here is because I I I learning I is a is a journey for us all. But you know it's really important to say this, eh? and I want to say this before we go. We have to remember we do serve a God who's sitting on there and in all this um. Purpose talk and curve versus non curve. God not sitting down there saying, mm, Let me see you figure it out now. Nah. Me and you here, I'll see that what you think you can't figure it out. That's not the God we serve. You do not need to go and doing you that. God not sitting down in hang, Kevin angry, waiting for you. Take that step there, take that step with a big stick. No, no. It's really important to understand that life is a process, is a journey. God interested in the journey. He take care of the destination. He knew everything. He knew where we would stop. He knew where we will, we, 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 we will kind of kind of like not get it a bit. He catered for all of that. All of that is in his master plan. There's nothing we do, no mistake we can make, nothing we can do that God and cater for that. Remember, God is God. We limited. So now I'll limit him as he oh gosh, I make a mistake, that is it. No, no, no. 
some of the disciples that make some of the biggest mistakes, actually some of the most offensive mistake was used the most by God. Yeah. Right? So it, it's just it's just uh it's just to 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 really internalize that and know that God is good. We not we, we this is not some kind of thing we sit long there waiting to penalize people all day and mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an important thing. And as we, as we work together, we, we, we grow together. That, that, that is what I see. Just start with a five minutes. Ask God what you want. Five minutes. That's the, that's the bottom line, right? Five minutes. Your, 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 your start start your, what you want. God faithful. No know what God wants you to do. God and that's it. Everything else will fall in place, right? Everything, yeah. God, yeah, faithful. Well, boy, so everybody waiting to watch a replay. Everybody is grateful. We have, I get a confirmation. Kedra get confirmation. Our words, there's a lot of things happening. So we're very, very grateful as a community for your sharing. Um, with respect to uh, Laurel, we have a YouTube channel, right? Um, that we post the links to after so every episode of WTT from last year to now will be on a YouTube channel. It normally goes up like the week after, and we also share it on the Facebook page, Laurel. So you should get it um within the next few days, right? Which I did by the next weekend, but I'll try and do it a little sooner than usual. So um that's it for me, you know. I do have anything to say again. I said for me too, except that. It was good having you. God yeah. you. Yes. Thank you. I, no, I enjoyed this if one. Ever, I enjoyed if, it. if ever you feel like you have something you want to drop, yes. let us know. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, I'll be, I'll be glad to. I'll be glad to if you, as you all do your schedules and stuff like that, just, you know, I, no, but God, God's will anything. I, I good to go. God spares my life. To, to yeah. what extent I could help. I, that is what, we, that is what, I get lots of help, so I can <laughs> try help. Yeah, give, give. I get help, lots. Right? I need a lot. I need a lot of help, so you could, you could try. You know. I, yeah, it's a blessing to help. Well, all right. So, thanks very much again. Have a good night, guys. Um, I mean, you all have steadily been there. Um, thanks for coming. Thanks for joining. Thanks for staying. Um, thanks for participating. Thanks for your comments. Um. Somebody saying Candace have to drop a word. <laughs> Just drop a word. Candace had a look and look who say had to drop a word. Off of my job. <laughs> oh, that's that my job. What's my job she asking for? I think that's what Michelle talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Michelle asking that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michelle, yes. Yeah, that's that, that, So Candace, you have a word for my drop? Ah, Today was I'm so going for, um, just saying yes, eh? <laughs> Let me see. Uh, well, good. I know where to know you have one. Like, I have a like a breakfast bench. <laughs> it's had so much things today, Dread. Uh, so, so many things today. Okay, let me now. Nah, that one's too easy. I was gonna say olive oil, but I'll be too easy. <laughs> I don't have a word. I don't have a word. Michelle, she do have a wood. <laughs> As always, no, the panelist was real good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> nobody has a wood. <laughs> she said doubles. <laughs> doubles, yes. What Michelle doing, boy? Michelle is Mark's wife, by the way, guys. Yeah, that's Mark. Michelle, <laughs> Michelle, point you on scene. Drop a wood on curve, or be curve with a doubles. <laughs> hey, but let's thank you, everybody. And everybody that's listening and stuff, God is faithful, you know, and it's um it's um it's a beautiful time to be here, you know. They, they, you know, I tell some people the other day they had some people open their eyes yesterday and today they couldn't open their eyes. They're not even here. Yeah. Right? So the fact that we could open our eyes means the Lord saying, Hey, I'm here, let's go. You know? And the fact that we here yeah. means that there is something for us to do. Something for us to do. Everybody, yeah. everybody, not, everybody, not finish yet. So, everybody. Yeah. yeah. We really have no. Yeah. Nobody have any kind of competition. Nobody in competition with anybody. I try to tell people that all. You know, not in a competition with anyone. 
God and create any two people always... the same. God and create any two people the same. So there, literally, there's no competition. So that take all the pressure. There's no competition. Like there is nobody you need to compare yourself with. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Well, all right. So thanks all right. Community, everybody, have a very, very, very good week. A blessed week. May you accomplish everything you wish to accomplish in the week. May you achieve everything that you're meant to achieve in the week. And let's just go forth and win this week. Hey, Have a blessed. great week, everybody. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be Bye. Blessed. Bye. I'm going to need some corn soup.